Alan Bellhorn. I'm Connor Musil. And I'm Luis Jimenez. We are PTVI News, and today we're here to discuss a recent local plastic straw ban. Across the country, many cities have created regulations on plastic straws. The first plastic straw ban was put into play in many towns in Massachusetts in 2015. And as we later know, in 2019, on the 1st of January, uh, Washington, D.C., put into effect the plastic straw ban. More locally, Pompano Beach followed suit this past March of 2019. The basic premise of the Pompano Beach ban is that businesses must provide single-use straws made up of renewable or compostable material. This includes paper, sugarcane, or bamboo, but no plastic straws. This, of course, does not apply to those with disabilities or those in their own homes. Bans like these are particularly important in coastal areas such as South Florida because plastic straws have especially detrimental consequences in marine environments. I get that plastic straws can damage coastal ecosystems, but I feel like there are other plastic issues that can be addressed, like plastic bags. Honestly, I think these plastic straw bans kind of started because of all the hype on the internet, like Visco Girls, and about saving the turtles and using reusable straws, like metal straws. But what about plastic containers or cups? I feel the same way about it. Lewis, I think it would make sense to focus more on these larger pieces of plastic if we want less plastic in the ocean. I get where you guys are coming from, and yes, all types of plastic are contributing to this issue, but I actually spoke with our AP environmental science teacher here at Pompano Beach High School, and she explained why that might not necessarily be true. I'm here with Ms. Dupre, the AP environmental science teacher here at Pompano Beach High School, to talk about the debate over plastic straws and paper straws. My first question is, what major environmental consequences can plastic straws have? Plastic straws break down very easily in the environment. They're exposed to heat, they're exposed to, and in the ocean, to the salinity, so it breaks them down and it makes microplastics, which are one of the biggest culprits um, in destruction of species because the species eat them and then they obstruct, those plastics obstruct their digestive tract and many um, of our species are endangered due to the, the fact that they're eating all those microplastics. Are there any environmental consequences for paper straws and if so, what are they? Paper straws normally are made so that they will naturally degrade their, um, the better quality ones are made even from unbleached paper and some of them are coated with natural wax, beeswax. Um, most of them are uncoated though and they do degrade in the environment. They should degrade in the environment. Are plastic cups and containers just as much of an issue as plastic straws? Plastic straws are smaller and they're one-time use and so people dispose of them. Because they're small, they're difficult to recycle and most communities don't recycle them and they end up as waste in the ocean, especially in Asia. And so they are one of the big contributors to the plastic pollution, but containers are also plastic containers left on beaches or thrown into landfills or uh, in the trash end up, if you don't recycle them properly, end up, a lot of them end up in the ocean. Are there any other alternatives to banning plastic straws or do you think that would be the best option to help get rid of some of I think banning them is a good idea, but education so that people know why they're being banned, not just banning them and saying they're, you know, a lot of people are against the ban because mm -hmm. they don't really have the educational background to understand why it is that they're so harmful in the environment. But if you invite people and you explain to them, you just invite them here to a beach cleanup and they'll mm -hmm. see the microplastics everywhere. And that's really one of our big targets at beach cleanups. Yes, we don't see as much of the large plastics as we see the, the small microplastics, and, and they're much more difficult to get out of the ocean, but much easily, much more easily eaten by organisms. Now I'm kind of confused. So soon after the regulation for banning straws was put into play, the Florida Senate passed a bill that wouldn't allow local governments to regulate plastic straws. But if they're so much worse than paper straws, why would anyone want to stop regulating them? I mean, a lot of it is party politics. Even though the bill to stop local governments ended up getting vetoed by the governor, it was passed in the House and Senate because Florida has a Republican majority. Yeah, and Republicans are all about keeping the government out of businesses, so something like forcing businesses to purchase paper straws 
which are more expensive instead of plastic straws, would be out of their ballpark. And since we live in South Florida, which is more democratic, there are bound to be some disagreements between our local and state governments. Most people in our community have been supportive of the city efforts to help the environment. But since that bill was passed in the Senate, I've noticed that some businesses have brought back plastic straws, even though the ban is still in place. I feel like as a city, things like this may be hard to regulate for all businesses since we have so many big and small and I actually talked to the mayor of Pompano Beach to get some more insight on how the city has been handling all of this. I'm here with Pompano Beach Mayor Rex Hardin to discuss the recent plastic straw ban for businesses in Pompano Beach. So why did the city of Pompano ban plastic straws? Well, primarily it had to do with uh, the, our concern for the environment and the, the impact that plastic straws pose for the environment. Plastic straws are, are kind of a, almost a unique situation as opposed to other types of plastic debris. Plastic straws are so small that they actually don't get caught oftentimes in the, in the garbage or recycling collection process. Mm -hmm. And pla consequently, plastic straws, they do wind up going into the ocean quite frequently. And of course, sea life then gets impacted by it. So yes, that's, that's primarily why we, we went after plastic straws. There's other, other areas we'd like to look at, but we wanted to start with plastic straws and go from there. So how did the city enforce the ban? Well, our city attorney um, drafted a letter informing local businesses that uh, we had the ordinance, and I believe that was sent out to all the local businesses to alert them to the fact that it's no longer legal to utilize plastic straws in Pompano Beach, with, with certain, certain uh, exceptions. I mean, because we, we had to leave exceptions in place in case, for instance, if someone's had handicapped and they need to use a plastic straw because they can't utilize their hands in some way. So, but the city attorney's office, they drafted the letter and sent it out. That's my understanding. So even though the governor vetoed the bill, how did you feel about the Senate's repeal? Um, I, I was extremely disappointed that the Florida legislature decided to overturn our, our ban, ours and others, our ban on plastic straws. I, I thought it was very short-sighted of the state to, to take that action, number one. And number two, I thought it was an overreach by the state government to interfere with what the local um, local folks, local residents uh, were asking us to do, which the state legislature has got a habit lately. It's not, it's not unique to Florida. Um, it's kind of sweeping the nation where they're overstepping their bounds. Um, they're, they're infringing on what, we've, what we're, we refer to as home rule. In Florida, we ha definitely have what's called a home rule where mm -hmm. Certain things are relegated to the state. Everything else is relegated to the local local government. And this was one of those situations. But the states stepped in for you know their own reasons and decided to try and overturn our ban. Is there anything else the city can do to help stop the growing amount of plastic in the ocean? Oh, without question, there is. And in fact, uh, that's something that we we have uh, we have encouraged the state. Once again, I, I mentioned the state because the state is actually a, a, a fairly large impediment to our further actions towards um, con controlling the plastic pollution that does go into the ocean. The state has uh, passed an ordinance or a law at the state level that um, says that we cannot at the local level do anything to regulate plastic bags, like you know, plastic grocery bags that you get at Publix or Winn-Dixie. So the state has said that we can't pass a law, which we would very much like to pass laws, or at least talk about passing these laws um, to help, help protect our environment. But the state has, has you know, reserved that right to themselves, which, yes, we have encouraged the state to overturn that, uh, that regulation because we feel it's better handled at the local level. Um, after all, something that really impacts a coastal community like Pompano Beach is different than something that might impact Ocala. Ocala, of course, is not nearby the ocean, so if they use plastic bags there, it's, it's a little different situation than if people use them here in Pompano Beach. It's comforting to know that the city really cares about the environment, and we are taking some other initiatives as well. That was probably my favorite takeaway from that interview. Yeah, it's also nice that they still have a plan of action to take care of the businesses that aren't following the legislation. I just hope we can see an impact here and maybe spark more environmental action around the country. That's all we have to talk about today here at PTVI News. Thanks for listening, and be sure to check out our other content on pompanotvi.com to stay informed about our community. I'm Kylan Bellhorn. I'm Connor Measle. And I'm Luis Jimenez. Thanks for listening.